And now, another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. The Daisy Chain. Written for suspense by John R. Forrest. When is it going to stop raining? That's what I ask myself. Is that a knock or is it the storm? It's hard to tell. It's cold, too. I put a shilling in the geezer an hour ago and the water's cold already. There are scientists who say the climate's changing a dead right. It's a knock, I think. Now, who'd be out tonight? Only that daisy chain murderer who escaped from jail would be out tonight. Now I see in the paper they're trying to locate his mother. Chances are they'll find them both drowned in the London rain. What I'm trying to say, only evil men... Father, but... stop your silly nonsense. No one with any sense in this knocker would be out. Go to the door, Sharon, please. Yes, Father. Oh, how do you do? Well, better now. Thank you that I'm inside. Oh, take off your coat. I'll put your umbrella over here. I, I don't want to be a bother to anybody, but I'm alone now. Very much alone. And do you have a room to let? I'm Pitchfield, dear. This is my daughter, Sharon. I'm the proprietor of the premises. Well, we do have one room to let. What's your name? I'm Mrs. Grimes. Mrs. Hedy Grimes, that is. My husband was the late George Grimes of um, Manchester. You're from Manchester, Mrs. Grimes? Yes, indeed. Came all the way by train and then scuttled about in this rain. I, I was so grateful to see your sign. Oh, well, you like the room. It has a great and cozy conservatory. I'm... I'm sorry about your husband, Mrs. Grimes. Was it recent? Oh, mercy, no. It happened 35 years ago, but I never remarried. Oh. Well, largely because of my health. My back has given out several times, just lately, too. How much rent do you charge for the room? Well, I'm sure we can talk business in the morning, can't we, Father? Uh, uh, Father, would you carry Mrs. Grimes' case into her room? Oh, what a ride. All the way I believe you said uh, Manchester, Mrs. Grimes. This way, please. I've been reading about the Daisy Chain murderer, Mrs. Grimes. Oh, Father, stop playing detective. I'll get Mrs. Grimes' fire going. Never read papers anymore, listen to third program, because it puts me to sleep. Now, we're a little jittery. Right on top of the fog and rain, this daisy chain murderer escaped from jail, right from the hangman's nose, he did. You never heard about him in Manchester. <laughs> I dare say everybody in England's heard about him now. Has to be hanged in 30 days. Oh, those poor girls... One in the sand at Bognor Regis, the other one... Uh, where was it, Sharon? Regent's Park. Father, will you change the subject? The last one at Hampstead Heath. He wasn't any Jack the Ripper. No, not this fine bucko. I'm talking about the killer I am. This one was artistic and sentimental. Left a daisy chain around the necks of his poor victims. Please excuse Father Mrs. Grimes. He's an amateur Sherlock Holmes. I and he don't want to trespass on your good nature, but would you happen to have a glass of stout... My back is going out again, and I, I can tell her. I get such a clutch right in the small... The part of Manchester, Mrs. Oh, Brown. what an ugly old city it is. All the mills and coal. I'm so fortunate to find you good people with a room to let. After my bitter journey and... Oh, oh, oh my back. There are some nicer spots in Manchester. Oh, yes, I lived in one of the better places, a lovely part of town for those in modest circumstances. I'm sure you did. And this place oh, was... Oh, dear. Uh... Oh, thank you for the stout, young lady. There you are. Oh, yes, it was a beauty spot. I, I must remember the number. Well, no matter. Oh, uh, 23-something. Daisy Bank Road. <laughs> Come tomorrow, Marin, we'll tell her to go. She gets a free night's lodging just because we oh, can't... Oh, Father, keep... you're an old fuss Well, budget. better be safe than sorry. But if you're so worried, why don't you notify the inspector? Well, I'm sure I'd feel out of place reporting a harmless old woman to the well, police. Well, she's a harmless old woman. Why do you... Well, she doesn't talk like the people of Manchester. Shall we get the ten o'clock news and go to bed? I was never one to lean on the cautious side, you understand? But right now, don't what with one thing... Don't you trust anybody, a... Father? Well, I don't trust somebody from Manchester who doesn't talk that way. Eh, nothing to be done tonight. 
As your dear mother used to say, my she rest in peace. Tomorrow will be a fairer day. In just a moment, we will return for the second act of... Suspense. Why didn't you leave me alone? Why didn't you... How did you find me? Oh, I've got a candle. Now, now, wait a moment. Oh, easy, easy, Mama. Oh, Mama, I saw you leave your old digs this morning. I watched you give the slip to the bobbies. Oh, you were clever, Mama. Oh, they'll get you. Oh, my boy, they'll get you. I had to leave. I knew the Bobbies would look for me and find you that way. You shouldn't have followed me. They'll get you for sure. Not if you quiet down. Oh, well, it's great to be... I suppose this is home. They keep saying you did it. You keep saying you didn't do it. Oh, my poor boy, when will it stop? You got any food, Mama? The papers write those dreadful things. And it's on the wireless all the time. Mama, I want some food. Oh, what horrible days these are. Horrible days. When you were a little boy, you'd go bound into the parks and bring me back flowers, singing and laughing. Oh, Jimmy. And then they started saying all those things about you. Oh, I can't stand it anymore. I can't stand it. It's got to stop. It's got to... Oh, it's cookies all you've got. Only had a fire for a few moments, but there'll be tea. How many people in the house? Only two. The landlord and his daughter. His daughter? It's uh, it's a slack season with them. Just two people live here. What's the daughter like? You wouldn't be asking about the daughter, Jimmy, if you were my little boy again. Don't you dare ask me about her. Oh, what manner of man have I raised? That he... uh, you'll be raising the dead if you don't pipe down. And you can choke about it. You, with the likeness already made of you at Madame Tussauds. <laughs> I'll be staying with you, Mama. And, and you'll put me up, and you won't tell anybody anything. It'll be just like those other days. Uh, tell me more about the daughter, Mama. What's her name? May the good Lord have mercy on your soul. Is this Inspector Christ? Yes. Uh, Inspector, I let her room last night. A bad night, if you recall. An old woman took the room for a fortnight. Said she was from Manchester. Then this morning she announced her son had come a-visiting. Now, while I'm not naturally a suspicious man... I began to wonder about that daisy chain. Well, yeah, you're a lively one, all right. Well, there's no harm done. We'll have the light in no time. Matter of fact, we've had a call from our station in the south of England saying a boy answering the description has been picked up. So you can stop worrying. Oh, thank you, Inspector. That's all right. Why, um, I just wanted to make certain... At it again, Father. What did you find out? Scotland Yard has them, all right. Or think they have. You know what curiosity did to the kitten? Hey, so look here. Do you think you ought to chat so much with that boy? You know, you spent all morning talking to him. He recites such lovely poetry. Such a nice voice he has. Uh, never worked a day in his life. He's had a lot of schooling. He speaks well. Well, you mind yourself now, yeah? I'm off to the city. Goodbye, Father. <laughs> So, your kind old father warned you about my offish ways. What does he know about me? I bet he was offended because I recite poetry. Jimmy, you were listening. Well, I couldn't help hearing. 
Ah, what a beautiful day for the pure in heart. A day when the morning sun salutes its own, the very young. You have quite a way with words. Hmm. A much better approach when I'm out of doors on the grass, listening to nightingales. <laughs> when peace comes dropping slow. What say we hie off to the greengrocers, we get some bread and cheese, some grapes and wine, and dine like royalty under the trees, eh? I know a place on the riverbank. Oh, I couldn't. It's bad form. Just a picnic in broad daylight. Jimmy! But... Jimmy! Let's go right now. But that's your mother. No. She just can't let me out of her sight. On with us. Come on, let's go. Jimmy, I can't. Quick, or no picnic. <laughs> We will return for the third act of Suspense. But the dear old Thames is not ugly up toward the source. Do you know that country? Well, a little bit. When I was a boy with my parents. That was before we moved to London. Nice memories. Yeah. Then the Blitz. Uh, both killed, 1940. Oh. Oh, Mrs. Grimes isn't your mother. No, no, no. She adopted me. One of those war orphanages. <laughs> Raised me since I was four. Hmm. Oh, I'm like her own son, she says. Sharon, we're really alone here. <laughs> Behind the heather. Ah. To be us, plague the weather. Who can see us? Whose immortal lines are those? Hmm. Fellow named Grimes. Yeah, a great poet. A fine scholar. And a man... A man who would like very much to be a gentleman. Oh, you really wrote that? I thought it was Swift or Moore or somebody. You have a fine mind, my lady. Discerning one, too. But uh, as I was observing, we are quite alone. Now, who really can see us? It is a bit secluded, isn't it? Oh, that Bobby over there can see us. What way? What Bobby? Oh, you're tipping over the basket. That Bobby over there, he's coming this way. Not a word. D don't talk to him. What's going on with you? You're shaking. Hey, let me talk. But you nearly spoil the sandwiches I made. Jimmy, you're still shaking. It's afternoon. Good day for a picnic. You'd better hurry. Look at the clouds. Yeah, it, it's clouding a bit. Always does this time of year. Everything all right? Yeah, quite. Since all the murders last year, we talk to the people now and then and ask them the time of day. Well, it's time he was eating now. Better be watching the rain clouds. Afternoon. Why do you act so strangely? He wasn't going to hurt you. He was very pleasant. Yeah, they all are, for a while. If, if, if I pick you some daisies, may I have a sandwich? Oh, look. Daisies all around us. Well, do I get the sandwich? Of course you do. But first the daisies. Well, all right. But let me help you get up. Oh, would you hand me the bottle of wine? You like daisies, Jimmy? Oh, where I used to live, we got fields of them. We lived on Daisy Bank Road. Look out, you're spilling it. It's a wild look on your face. Better take it off. We're having company again. This time, two Bobbies, the same one and a friend. Oh, on your feet. <laughs> Come on, do as I say. What? No, yeah, we'll walk this way. Only fast. J just keep looking overhead as though you fear the rain. Fast! Hey, come on now, lively! Jimmy! Get, get to the edge of the park. Take the first tram, and I'll be along later. Yeah, get going! You're holding my hand! Get going! You stay away from Mrs. Grimes. <laughs> Just a moment, we will return for the concluding act of Suspense. Father? Papa? No, it's me, sweet child. Your papa went to the pub, said it was Thursday night. Mrs. Grimes, I'm confused. Has Jimmy been here? Jimmy's with you, isn't he? It was so strange, Mrs. Grimes. We saw some bobbies and he ran. Why did he run, Mrs. Grimes? Why did he? Why? Did he spoil your picnic? Of course he did. Where is he? 
Why did he run, Mrs. Grant? Oh, I was always so headstrong and I was so mixed up. It was such a pretty afternoon. Did you sit down under a tree? Did he read poetry to you? Did he get that far away look like he was a little boy when he read to you? And did you like the sound of his voice? Did his voice sound deep in his chest? Mrs. Grimes, you have father's key. Why are you locking the door? Did he tell you that your eyes were beautiful, that your hands were pretty? And did he hold your hands? Mrs. Grimes, will you let me out of this room? I'm sorry, but you've made me uneasy. Everything in this world will pass, my dear. And never fear, you shall be released to join. Oh, Miss Sheridan, tell me more about Jimmy. Did he make up a little rhyme to suit the occasion? And did he... Oh, that poor girl in Regent's Park. Jimmy was so fond of her. But I had to follow her one day and make a daisy chain. But in Bognor Regis... I couldn't find any daisies. So I brought some all the way from Hampstead Heath. A miserable journey on the train, but the little vixen in Hampstead Heath knew how strong I was before I gathered the daisies. Oh. Jimmy was always so fond of picnics and would go dashing off. So I have a beautiful daisy chain for you, my dear Sharon. And I also have strong, sinewy hands. No. Wonderfully strong like Jimmy's. Father! Father! Now poor Jimmy will really hang. But I'd rather let the oh, hangman no. get him than you. Than you or any other girl. Oh, no. Better the hangman than you, Mrs. Burns. You see, we are very pretty, but I am stronger, you see. Oh, Sharon, you are oh, so pretty. No. It is too bad. No. And the others, they were so pretty. Oh, no. Sharon. Sharon. It's me. Oh, it's me, oh, Jimmy. Relax, Mrs. Grimes. Oh, Let Jimmy, go now. Jimmy. Come along with you. No. All right. Take Mrs. Grimes out of here. Sharon, are you all right? Oh, there is my father. I'm Inspector Christ, young lady. Your father's right here. Sorry to have made you a sitting duck, so to speak, but we've been outwitted by this Mrs. Grimes for one entire year. And she's really Mrs. Mabel Dodds, Jimmy's foster mother. I was in on it too, Sharon. That is, at the very last I was in on it. You'll forgive your father? Me too, Sharon. You know, everybody thought I was the daisy chain murderer until Scotland Yard got suspicious... They arranged my escape. Ah, oh, you think we can... You think we can ever have a... A civilised picnic? Oh, Jimmy. <laughs> can you ever have a picnic with a man who already has an image cast at, at Madame Tussauds? <laughs> I'll... Uh, I'll think about it. <laughs> Suspense. You've been listening to The Daisy Chain, written for suspense by John R. Forrest. In a moment, the names of our players and a word about next week's story of Suspense. Tonight's story were John Clark as Jimmy, Joan Loring as Sharon, and Jane Rose as Mrs. Grimes. Others in the cast were Brett Morrison, Marvin Peisner, and Mercer McLeod. Listen again next week when we return with End of the Line by Murray Burnett, another tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. The Kingston Trio next, followed by latest CBS News, and Have Gun Will Travel on CBS Radio.